Hey guys, in this video we'll go through a few examples of making HTTP GET requests from an Angular application. The posts that I'm going through now I'll link to in the video description below so you can follow along and get access to the code snippets. First we'll be making a simple GET request that returns an any response type and assigns the uh, data from the response or one of the properties from the response to a local property in our component. The API that we'll be hitting, it uh, accesses data on the npm package repository and we'll be searching for any packages uh, in the Angular scope. So effectively we'll be returning the total number of, or getting the total number of Angular packages in npm and displaying that in our Angular UI. Secondly, we'll be doing the same request, but getting a strongly typed response using a TypeScript interface here. Thirdly, we'll change the URL to an invalid URL, so we can uh, add in error handling and log the error out to the console. And lastly, we'll send a request with some custom headers set, so you can see how to set custom headers. Uh, we'll be starting at the end of the post where we set up the prerequisites for setting up an application for uh, to an Angular app to send HTTP requests. But for, before we get to that, we'll actually create a boilerplate Angular app using the Angular CLI. I'm on a uh, machine that has Node and Visual Studio Code installed here, but I don't have the Angular CLI installed yet, so I'll install that first with npm i minus g to install it globally angular slash cli when that's installed you should be able to hit the ng command and get some usage information so that means it's installed successfully next I'll just create a directory for um, our projects that we'll use and cd into that directory then I'll create a new project and let's call it uh, actually the get examples. We don't need routing. And I'll select less, even though we're not using any styles in this in this example. When the example app is finished creating, cd into the app directory. Then type code dot to launch Visual Studio Code with the application, or if you have a different editor, just open up the project in your editor of choice. Also, jump back or before starting the app, you can go into the app component. This is the boilerplate code that the uh, Angular CLI creates for us, which we don't need any of, so we can delete all that. I'll replace it with just a div and an h1 tag. And then it has to be get examples. Save that. And jumping back to the command line. npm start to start the application. We can see the app's up and running now, and the server is listening on localhost port 4200. So if we go back to our browser, open a new tab, type localhost 4200, we should see our title. There is our test application. Okay, now let's see what are the prerequisites for making HTTP requests from Angular. First thing is we need to import the HTTP client module from the Angular common HTTP package. So we'll copy that import statement and we'll put it into our app module of our Angular application. So jumping back over here, open up the app module and paste that import statement up there to get the HTTP client module and I'll copy the module name and add it to the import statement of the ng module decorator. Save that file. Now we have the HTTP client module imported into our app module of our Angular app. The next step is we want to import 
enter any component that you want to make a HTTP request from. You want to import the HTTP client like this. I'll copy that line. And also then you want to add an instance of the HTTP client or a parameter <coughs> to the constructor of the component. And that will cause the Angular dependency injection system to inject an instance of the HTTP client into the component when, when it gets created. So any method of that component will then have access to the HTTP instance to be able to make requests like this one in the ng on init. Um, rather than taking each different piece of this app component and uh, risking doing typos in our example app, I'll just copy the whole thing over our app component in the example app. And the only difference I'll need to make uh, change is because the selector here is app, I'll need to change that back to app root, which is what it's named in, in Angular CLI app component. Here. So it's a difference there that we need to worry about. Don't need to worry about the less style sheet because we're not using any styles in our examples. So I'll just change that back to app root. And I'll remove this for the moment, so we can start without any HTTP requests in there. Save that. If I jump back over to the browser, it should be unchanged. And I'll open up the DevTools, so we'll be able to see our requests once we add them into the project. So we'll go back to the top of the post, and we'll make our first HTTP GET request. By copying this snippet and <clears throat> going back into VS Code in the ng on init method, pasting that in there. And we can see what this is doing is using our local HTTP client instance, calling get, setting the return type to any, hitting this API, which returns the a collection of the Angular packages as well as a total property to with the total number of Angular packages in NPM. We, it returns an observable which we subscribe to and then we set the local total Angular packages property of our component to the total property returned from the data of that API response. So when I save that we should then That'll be making that request. If I jump back over there. We don't see anything displaying up in the UI yet because we haven't updated the template for the component yet. But if we jump down to the network tab, we can see that our search request is being sent and there's our total being returned. If we jump back to VS Code and update our app component template. Add in our total Angular packages property there to render that out. Save that and go back to here. There we can see it rendered in the UI. Right, that's the first request working. Now let's see how to do the same thing with a strongly typed response. The benefit of using a strongly typed response like this over using an any type response is that you get a strong uh, type checking as you're developing. So within your IDE, like the VS Code, it'll tell you the properties that are available on the response. And if you try to um, enter a property that isn't available, it'll it'll underline and it'll give you errors um, before before the code runs as you're developing. So I'll just copy that search results interface there and put it, I'll just place it in the same file as our app component for this example. And 
instead of returning an any response type, I'll change that to search results. And now, if I hover over data here, you can see that the type is search results. And if I go data dot, we can see the um, properties that are available on on that interface. And if I was to type a property that's not available, it tells me that that property does not exist on type search results. So we'll leave it as total. And save. Jump back into the browser. And it's exactly the same as expected. Right, moving on to the third example, which is making a request with error handling. Okay, to add, so the other examples that we've done so far are calling subscribe and passing in a single callback, which is a callback for the success of that request. If you want to also pass an error callback, if there is a problem with the request, you can pass in data as well as error. So you pass in a second callback. I'll copy that there. I'll copy it without the extra round bracket at the top. And jumping back over to Visual Studio Code, paste that in there. And now in order to force an error, we'll change the URL to an invalid URL. Paste that there. So what we expect to see is nothing displayed in the UI because this callback won't get triggered. We won't be getting the total, but we should see in our console the message there was an error and then an error display. So let's save that. Go back here. And we can see the request was a 404 response. There's nothing in the UI. And if we go to the console, you can see there there isn't was an error and there is our error object. Okay, I'll show you one extra thing here is that rather than just passing two um, callbacks to the subscribe method, you can also pass an object with named parameters. Where the success callback is named next and the error callback is named error. So if I save that, it should work exactly the same way as it does there. Okay, moving on to the final example setting HTTP headers with our GET request. Uh, the way that headers are set is for the GET request, we pass a second object parameter which is the options object, which has a headers property. And that headers property is just a simple object that takes key value pairs. And uh, that's how we set headers on an HTTP, HTTP request. So I'll copy that headers object over. Um, we'll just leave it on our invalid request. That's fine for us to see what headers are sent. Place the headers there and pass it as a second parameter to the get request. Save that. It should still be an invalid request as, ex as expected because it's an invalid URL, but if we look into the request that was sent, we should now see the request headers, an authorization with bearer my token, and a my custom header with foobar. 
So authorization of my bearer token and my custom header foobar, as we can see there. All right, that's all our examples. Um, so that's how you send get requests from Angular um, using HTTP. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. If you did, please like or subscribe below. Okay, cheers.